I'm Jelly G. Welcome to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make my gluten-free beef and broccoli. And it's mostly gluten-free to begin with. The only questionable ingredient I would say would be soy sauce. I don't actually use soy sauce. I use Bragg's amino acids. So that would be the only questionable part. And then I do have some beef stock, which is usually mostly gluten-free as well. Always check your labels. This really is a fast and easy recipe to make and it's delicious and really minimal ingredients. I know it looks like I have a lot going on, but it's really, really simple. And I like to serve my beef and broccoli over rice. So I do have a pan with water over here and I'm using brown rice today, but white rice works just as well. Or for that matter, you could even use some noodles, whatever you like, or just eat the beef and broccoli by itself. The first thing I want to do is get my green onions cut up. These will be for garnish. You could actually cook these with your beef if you want to, but I like them as a garnish. I have a compost bucket down there. I like to use the whites and the greens. Kind of stir them around a little bit here on my cutting board. Then they're all kind of mixed together in my little dish here. So garnish is ready, set that aside. I've got four garlic cloves here. This is to taste. If you like more, add more. So the first thing I'm gonna do, besides get my garnish ready, is get my marinade ready. And I've got a bowl and just a small grater here. I wanna grate my garlic today, and then I've got two good sized chunks of frozen ginger. They're still kind of icy. And I've mentioned before in other videos where I use fresh ginger. Whenever it's in season or on sale, I will buy it and I'll peel it and cut it up into chunks like this to use in recipes. So delicious in so many different recipes. And then I'll grate my ginger with my garlic as well. And this works out really good to just make the marinade in this bowl. And then once we get our beef cut up, it will go in here too. And this doesn't have to marinate for very long at all. Usually 15 minutes to a half hour is about as long as I let it marinate. If you get your beef and your marinade done first, then that can marinate while you get all of your other things ready, start cooking your rice, cut up your broccoli, all of those things. And you might have noticed I've got two cutting boards here. Just because I don't like to cut vegetables after I've cut raw meat. And I don't like to cut raw meat on my wooden cutting board. So then you might say to yourself, well then just cut your broccoli up first. And that's a very good point. And then you just use one cutting board. But because I want my meat to marinate while I'm cutting up my broccoli, this is what I'm doing. You could wash your cutting board in between, but this is fine. And then I've got some bigger chunks of garlic there that I'll probably just chop with my knife. There we go, garlic in there. And it's okay that my ginger is a little bit frozen. I've had it sitting out for about an hour or so. I actually find sometimes it's a little bit easier to grate when it's frozen, especially after having been frozen. It gets awfully squishy after you freeze it, which doesn't matter. The, the texture doesn't matter, we just want the flavor. And don't worry if you don't have any fresh garlic or fresh ginger. You can use powdered ginger and powdered garlic in this recipe. I'm aiming for about a tablespoon of garlic and about two tablespoons of fresh ginger. And this is to taste. So however much you like is what you would add in. And then whatever the equivalent is from fresh to powdered if you're using dried ginger and dried garlic powder. Very carefully clean off your grater here. You don't want to leave any of this delicious flavor behind. So now for the rest of our marinade. I've got one tablespoon of Bragg's aminos or the same amount of a gluten-free soy sauce. And then I've got a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And then I've got some olive oil here and I'm just gonna eyeball, oh, about one or two tablespoons in here. And then just mix your garlic, ginger, soy sauce, red pepper flakes, oil together. And I think I'm gonna go just a little bit more oil. You want it to be able to coat your meat. And I know this doesn't seem really liquidy for a marinade. Sometimes marinades 
have a lot more liquid and you can put it in a bowl or a plastic bag and then squish it around, marinate overnight. But this one is more of a really thick coating for our beef. I got about one pound of sirloin steak. And then I've got probably about a little over one pound of broccoli. Those are the amounts that I like to use. But this recipe, you can always double up on the broccoli and do a little bit less meat if it's really expensive. And there are other cuts of meat that you can use as well. This is just the one that I like. So get your first strip of meat here. Now this is something you can have your butcher slice for you. But I wanted to show you how easy it is to do at home. So you want to find out which direction the grain is going. And because this is a longer piece, I'm going to cut it in half. Just to make it more manageable on my cutting board. And this doesn't even have to be exact. I'm going in about one inch or so strips here. And I don't mind if there's a little bit of fat, but if there's a big chunk like this, I do remove that. And now I'm going to start going on a diagonal into bite-ish size pieces. And I like them to be fairly thin. And traditionally, when you get beef and broccoli takeout or at a restaurant, they're really thin, flat strips of meat. But I like them to be a little bit smaller bite size, so they're easier to eat. Okay, there we go. So now that all of my beef is cut up, move aside my spatula, and then I'm gonna add in all of my beef, and then I'm gonna clean up very quickly, wash my hands and my knife, and then we can stir that together. There's my napkin, we'll save that for the broccoli. So just get in here, and you wanna try and evenly coat all of your pieces of beef. I love making recipes like this at home. They really are so much easier and faster and delicious. And I really like a marinade like this because you're not wasting a whole bunch of your ingredients that you're just gonna dump out later. Because this is a really thick marinade, we'll just fry it with our beef. Adds so much extra flavor. There we go. If you wanted your beef to marinate overnight, then you would just cover this in plastic wrap and stick it in the fridge. Because I'm only gonna let mine marinate for as long as it takes me to finish getting things ready, it's okay to sit out. I tried to get broccoli crowns. I always take off the leaves. I do have my compost bucket down there. Depending on the recipe, I will use the stems if you have a good amount of stems. This is not one of those recipes. The florets of the broccoli will be done a lot faster than the stems and then it gets kind of soggy. So I don't ever put the stems in with a stir fry like this, but you can if you want to just cook them first and take them out of the pan. But you don't have to throw them away. Save them for something else. They really are delicious. And then I go through, I want bite-sized pieces of broccoli as well. So this right here is one and a half cups of beef stock. And then this will be our sauce. So I've also got one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. This is a non-alcoholic version of this sauce. A lot of different sauces like this call for sherry or white wine, something like that, rice wine. I like to use the apple cider vinegar in place of that. And then I've got one tablespoon of cornstarch. And then we'll just Mix this together, we're kind of making a little bit of a slurry. And I've also started cooking my rice. Cook the rice according to the package directions. So that's ready there. Bring everything a little bit closer. I've got a wok today, you don't have to make this in a wok. A large frying pan skillet will work. Something that's big enough for all of it, and then of course to make your sauce. So I'm gonna turn this on fairly high heat, just until my wok is hot, and then I'll turn it down to about medium. Once my wok is nice and hot, I'm gonna add in one to two tablespoons of olive oil. I'm just eyeballing. And then about half of my meat mixture. 
And I like to cook just half of this at one time. Then my pan isn't crowded and I can get kind of a nice sear on some of the meat. And you want this to be in kind of an even layer. You don't want to crowd the pan. But it doesn't really matter because we're just going to stir it around anyways. I'm not looking to fully cook this meat. A little bit pink in the middle is okay. The residual heat from the meat will keep cooking and then we'll be adding it into a boiling sauce later. So this doesn't need to be cooked well done unless that's how you like it. And now that this first little bit of my meat is done, I'm going to put it in a clean bowl and then add a little bit more oil and fry the rest of my beef. And you don't have to use olive oil. Use your favorite oil for stir frying. Now that all of my beef is cooked, it's time for the broccoli. I'm going to add in another tablespoon of olive oil. Again, I'm just eyeballing. And I like to keep this moving. I don't mind if some of it gets a little toasty on the edges, but I don't want to overcook it. And I usually tend to go just under where it would be almost cooked. I'm going to add a little bit of water to help my broccoli steam. My wok comes with a lid. So I put the lid on just for a few minutes. I don't want to overcook my broccoli. I want it to be bright green and still a little on the crunchy side. And I don't know if you noticed or not, not adding any salt and pepper. The Bragg's amino acid, that tends to be on the salty side. Sometimes beef stock is on the salty side. I figure at the end, if you feel like it needs a little more soy sauce or anything like that, you can always add that in. And I'm not adding in any pepper because I've got the red pepper and I don't think it needs the pepper. But if you want to, add some in. And once it looks bright green like this and it's still pretty crunchy, I'm going to take it out of the pan and put it back in the bowl that it was in. The residual heat, it will keep cooking and I don't want soggy broccoli in my stir fry. Give your sauce a really good stir and then pour this in your wok. We want this to come up to a boil, stirring constantly so it gets thick. I don't know if you can see how nice and thick my sauce is. Once my sauce looks like this, it's nice and thick, I'm going to turn the heat down to about low. Add back in my beef. And I want this to simmer for just a minute or two. That way it will finish cooking any pink spots in my beef and it will help get the sauce flavor on the beef. And the marinade that was on the beef will help flavor my sauce. Now for my broccoli. And because we didn't cook our broccoli all the way, the broccoli will continue cooking in the sauce and absorb more of those flavors as well. I'm going to turn off the heat. Give all of this a really good stir. And perfect timing, my rice is done. So now we can eat. And if you were worried that we had too much sauce for the amount of meat and broccoli, you can see it all comes together so well. It really is the perfect amount. Let's get a little bit of green onions here. It's really hot. So again, you could serve this on noodles. You could serve it on white rice. Whatever you like. Just this by itself. It's really hot. I'm giving it a minute to cool off. But it comes together so fast. I'm going to try a piece of my beef all by itself. It is cooked perfectly. So tender and delicious. And I already know that my broccoli is a little on the crunchy side, but I don't mind at all. And that broccoli, it absorbs so much of the sauce flavor and even the marinade from the beef. Which is why I like to serve it with rice because the rice soaks up any extra sauce that's in there. 
It is absolutely delicious. And just that quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes gives it just the right amount of heat. Now this is where you would also add extra soy sauce at the table if you feel like it needs that. I don't feel like it needs anything. I think it's delicious and perfect just the way that it is. And even though it is beef and broccoli, you could add in some other vegetables if you want to. It doesn't have to be broccoli. You could do zucchini, summer squash, snow peas, cauliflower, whatever your favorite vegetable is or whatever you have on hand or a combination of all of those. They would all be delicious with this beef and the sauce. Let me know what you think if you make this recipe. It's so simple, so fast and easy to make, but so delicious. But thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you have any questions or comments, let me know, and I'll see you on the next one.